Hello and welcome back to my studio. My name is Tara Erin and I am an artist in a cubicle. In today's episode of the Artist in a Cubicle webcast, I'm going to be sharing with you the, the process that I call sort of the armature for my imagination. If you think about, for example, if you're working in clay to create a sculpture, a lot of times you'll have a wire framework underneath that soft material that helps to um, give it structure and hold that softer material in place until it's able to be hardened, fired, um, finished. And, you know, similarly, uh, I have learned to use the bullet journaling framework as a sort of armature for my creative activity and integrating my professional and creative practice. My artist in a cubicle journaling practice really combines elements of writer Carol's bullet journaling with cosmic smash booking as created by Kat Zelda Geller. So I will include links to both of their YouTube channels and websites in the description. And I also want to give a shout out to two really excellent YouTubers uh, who can also provide some great um, starting material if you want to get into the nuts and bolts of creating your own jo bullet journal. <clears throat> the first is Plant Based Bride. She did a video called the Rolling Weekly Log that I have really used as sort of the launching point. I've adapted it as I went along, but it really was a great explanation of how to create a minimalist bullet journal spread that allows you to reduce uh, replication of work and really keep track of the stuff on your to-do list, um, but in a really minimal way so that you're not spending a lot of time just creating the spreads from week to week. And so that makes it really useful as a way of, you know, leaving plenty of creative energy over for the projects I actually want to work on. On the other hand, if you really do love that elaborate, ornate, doodly type of bullet journaling, do not miss out on the work of Amanda Rockley. So those two honorable mentions as well will have links in the notes. So before I go on to showing you my current bullet journal, I just wanted to show this is just some plain copy paper that I have printed with the dot template from uh, stemsheets.com. I actually pulled it into Word uh, and I added a little box down there for my page numbering. But as you can see, this is really, you could, I could put this in a folder and use it that way. Um, I could hole punch this and put it in a three ring binder or I could mushroom punch it and use it in a disc planner. Truly, all you really need to get started is some copy paper and a printer. My core bullet journaling toolkit includes a disc bound planner, a mushroom punch because I do print my own pages so this allows me to um, then hole punch those so they go into the disc bound planner, and a pen wallet. My pen wallet includes two Tombow double pointed markers in red and black, uh, red and black Sharpie fine liner mark pens, a zebra mild liner in gray, a Sakura jelly roll in white, this is a number 10, um, <clears throat> a Pentel Silici gold pen, and a basic Bic uh, mechanical pencil. And for the art journaling or cosmic smash booking pieces, I also keep handy a pair of scissors and a couple of secret supplies inside. I've got a, um, an adhesive tape roller, a glue stick, and a white correction tape, and, whoops, <laughs> a set of Winsor Newton watercolors. I love the pigments. They're really um, intense and they mix really well also. And an aqua brush to go with the, an aqua brush to go with the 
watercolors, and finally some red thread and my business cards because, you know, you never know when you're going to need red thread or a business card. So that's my artist in a cubicle journaling setup. So I mentioned that how I use this journaling system is a kind of an armature for my imagination. That means structure. So before we jump into the more creative uses of the journal, we need to think about how are we going to structure it. And what I like to think of is that these structure pieces really give us something to push off of. They um, allow us to have a place that our creative energy can sort of um, gather and propel itself forward. So the four pieces that I use are an annual spread, a quarterly spread, a monthly spread, and a weekly spread. Um, and now let me walk you through my journal and how exactly I have those set up. This is my 2020 bullet journal. The first page I mentioned is the annual spread. Um, it begins with a pretty basic bullet journal key and index. So the key gives me the bullets, which show me my tasks and the status of my task by different marks that I may add to them. It also tells me if something is an event or an FYI only. Because I am able to pull pages out of this journal, you'll notice that I also have an additional uh, signifier here for filed items and you'll see that here in my index there's a lot of filed items. Uh, that's why even though we are six months in this bullet journal is still very slim and very portable and manageable. The signifiers allow me to indicate if something is important or past due and uh, some of these I'll probably discontinue in the coming year but that's the front page and the back page of my yearly uh, my yearly setup. I am going to discontinue this calendar. It just has not proven to be particularly useful for me. I've discovered I really like this future log format a lot better. Um, just simply noting the month of the year and then any dates that I might want to keep track of. Birthdays, um, you know, important meetings, maybe deliverables on my production work. The quarterly spreads in 2020 are something I've only been playing with for the last month or so, and so they're pretty rough and inconsistent at this point. Um, but I did want to show you this one page. You'll notice that this is actually an Excel spreadsheet that I was able to fill out and print out and punch and pop right in. I actually got this uh, OKR, Objectives and Key Results Tracking Tool, and online and was able to adapt it and fill it out. I'll put the link for that in the description as well. But more importantly, one of the nice things about using a disk bound format is it's super easy. I can just take any format I like, print it, hole punch it, and pop it in my planner. My monthly spread is again a front and back spread. The front side shows the major dates for the month and what's happening, any key events happening. So I have the first column set up with the days of the week, the second column set up with the dates of the month, and then I have them divided into weeks, one, two, three, four, and five, with a little bit of um, space at the bottom where I can doodle and think about a theme for the month. Uh, this is my theme for December 2020, success is a habit, so practice daily. Obviously, I still got plenty of space here to think a little bit more about what that's going to, what that might mean and how I might enact that. And then I have also a habit tracker. So um, whether it be making sure I get a walk and some exercise, plainly, I need to work on that. Uh, but my meditation is going really well. I just put a check mark each day that I successfully complete that task. The second half is a task tracker. And again, I will refer you back to um, that Bullet Journaling 101 by Plant-Based Bride for a more thorough explanation of how the task um, tracking and task logging works, uh, but it's very similar to that. 
and then finally the weekly setup again as you can see is um, divided in this case I put my production work up top and then I have my my um, personal work down bottom but it really helps to keep me honest and on track and make sure that I'm actually making progress on my goals so up here I have um, for instance the AIC episode two, that's what we're doing right now. So since it is Saturday and I've now started that, I'm going to draw a little line here and it is work in progress. And once it's done, I'll have the pleasure of <laughs> turning that into a little black box just like that. But what's interesting is that you notice I had intended to get working on it much earlier in the week. So for 2021, however, I actually am taking a new twist on this. I've been working in this methodology long enough now to have a pretty good sense of what works for me and it helps make me more productive and fosters my creativity. And so for 2021, I have actually created PDF templates for each of these four structures that I can print out and pop into my bullet journal uh, instead of having to recreate the same spreads week after week. For 2020, what I've done is I have turned each of these spreads into a PDF template that I can print out and incorporate into my notebook as needed without having to manually recreate the entire thing. Uh, this includes a quarterly framework that is now much more structured. I'm allowing myself three major objectives per quarter. Uh, I'll be designing the key results that I want to support that objective and then I'll be also taking note of the action plan. What is it that I'm going to do to accomplish those key results in support of those objectives? Then I've got my uh, monthly and weekly planners as well and I'm really loving this because that means I can spend more time actually working on my work and less on building and maintaining the armature for my creativity. One of the great things about using a bullet journal is the ability that you have to customize the pages exactly to what you want and what's going to help you be more productive. That said, I do have these PDFs. They are eight and a half by 11 letter size paper. They would probably print pretty well on A4 as well. And if you would like to get them for your own use, go to my website, taraerin.com slash free PDF, and they will be there for you to download and use. So all this talk about my 2021 templates has me ready to go, actually, to set up my new bullet journal for 2021. Since that will take us from the um, the bullet journaling side of the house over to Cosmic Smashbooking, I'm really excited because that'll help me to introduce how these two different modalities really start to create uh, a rich environment that allows us both the self-expression and the imaginative scope of creative practice, but also the rigor and the uh, the discipline and the progress that we get from having a a, um, a rigorous uh, framework and plan of action. So pop back for our next episode and let's get ready for a creative 2021. Hi, this is my kitty Domino. Say hello, Domino. Are you an artist in a cubicle too? And would you like 2021 to be your most creative year yet? Then join me on January 2nd for Visioning 2021, a very special workshop in which we will use both the right brain creative visualization and left brain strategic thinking to create a vision and an action plan for the coming year. 
For more information, go to www.taraerin.com/vision2021. I hope I'll see you there.